Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to another edition of Movie Goodness, where we examine life through cinema here on the KB Radio Network. I am your humbled host, Kevin Reed, and we are commemorating National Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, it starts on September the 15th all the way to October the 15th and this is a holiday or not really a holiday it lasts a whole month but <laughs> this is a celebration here in the United States for recognizing the contributions and influence of Hispanic Americans to the history culture and achievements uh, for the United States and so uh, I figured hey let's take some time out and show some love to our Hispanic brothers and sisters out there you know this is their month to celebrate their culture you know their history all, all that good stuff that we enjoy but we never give recognition where recognition is due you know as being a, a black american and knowing the culture cultural impact that black americans have had on this country and we get one measly month out of the year to celebrate <laughs> to celebrate you know I, I feel the pain and so we get our month they're they're getting their month so let's celebrate it and to commemorate this month we're going to go over the history and the impact of national hispanic heritage month and for our review today we're going to review a film that came out in 2017 that hit me in all of the fields uh, I still get emotional when I watch it. I've only watched it a couple of times because it's hard for me to get through it. Not because it's bad. It's because it's so doggone good. And that is Pixar's Coco. And so that'll be our film when, that we review at the end of this show. And so National Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, let's go through the history. It started off as Hispanic Week. <laughs> uh, Hispanic Week was established by legislation supported by Representative Edward R. Roybell of Los Angeles and signed into law by President Lyndon Johnson in 1968, taking place on the week including both September 15th and 16th. In 1988, the commemorative week was extended to a month, September 15th, to October 15th by legislation supported by Representative Esteban Edward Torres of uh, California, amended by Senator Paul Simon and signed into law by President Ronald Reagan. September 15th was chosen as the start point of the commemoration because it's the anniversary of Cry of Dolores, which took place on September the 16th 1810, which marked the start of the Mexican War of Independence and thus resulted in independence for the New Spain colony, now Mexico and Central American nations of Guatemala, uh, El Salvador, Costa Rica, Honduras, which became the Federal Republic of Central America. The 30-day period also included many dates of importance in the Hispanic community. Costa Rica, uh, El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras celebrate their anniversary of independence on September 15th. Mexico commemorates its independence on September the 16th. Chile commemorates its independence on September the 18th. And the celebration Columbus Day or De La de la Reza. I think I said that right. I don't know. I flunked uh, Spanish in high school, just just to be clear. <laughs> and, and the sad part about that, I was sitting next to my best friend, who is Honduran. And uh, <laughs> we both fail. I don't know how we both fail. You know, I thought I could copy off of him, and it didn't work out. But that's, that's, a, that's a story for another day. Uh, Hispanic Heritage Week was first proclaimed by President Johnson in 1968 in Presidential Proclamation 
3869. President Nixon, Ford, Carter, and Reagan gave annual proclamations for Hispanic Heritage Week between 1969 and 1988. National Hispanic Heritage Month was first proclamated by President George H.W. Bush on September 14, 1989 in Presidential Proclamation 6021. Since 1989, all presidents have given a presidential proclamation to mark Hispanic Heritage Month. Military Commemorations uh, National Hispanic Heritage Month is a time for the U.S. military to honor both fallen and active duty Hispanic Americans who serve in the armed forces. 61 people of Hispanic heritage has been awarded the National Medal of Honor. Two were presented to members of the Navy, 13 to members of the U.S. Marine Corps, and 46 to members of the U.S. Army. During the month, the U.S. Army commemorates the long-standing and remarkable contributions that Hispanics have made in building and defending this nation. As of September 2018, 136,000 Hispanic soldiers served, comprising 13.8% of the Army, according to the official Army website. The goal during National Hispanic Heritage Month is to celebrate the diversity and inclusion, inclusive uh, environment of the U.S. Army. Through coordinated efforts throughout the Army, this observance will be used to inform Army audiences and celebrate the contributions of Hispanic soldiers, citizens, and their families. The representation of Hispanic Americans on active duty has increased by 10% during the uh, past 30 years. In 1985, it was 3%. And by 2016, it was 13.7%. Uh, 13 the U.S. Navy celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month by honoring soldiers or sailors, should I say, of Hispanic heritage whose military service dates back to the Civil War. As of June 2018, approximately 59,000 active and reserve sailors of Hispanic heritage served on the U.S. Navy and the Marines. But I want to go back to the cry of Dolores for a minute because that's, uh, I read up on this doing research for this show and I thought that was intriguing because I never heard of that, you know? And it's funny. You know, I'm going to go on this tangent for a minute. It's funny how you only learn certain things in school. You know what I'm saying? Not j not just about this, but about other things that took place in history, and, which would have been interesting, which probably would have kept me more engaged in, <laughs> in school. You know, instead of hearing about Christopher Columbus uh, uh, being this great hero, the first Captain America, and come to find out that's a lie. You know, we, it would have been good to hear stories like this, you know, uh, uh, a culture of people gaining their into independence. Well, the cry of Dolores, and I'm pretty sure that is not pronounced Dolores. Well, maybe it is, but it, it's, it's a city in Mexico. And so it probably has a more rolling of the R's, if you, if you will. And I'm not going to attempt to do it because... I don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> so I'm just going to call it Dolores. So I'm giving that disclaimer. And, and with all these pronunciations that I'm, we're about to go over, I, I'm, I don't want to come off as offensive because this is supposed to be uh, honoring, <laughs> you know? So I'm, I'm not coming off as offensive. Uh, at least I pray that I'm not. But in any event, uh, the cry of Dolores occurred in Dolores, Mexico, on September the 16th, 1810, when a Roman Catholic priest rung his church bell and gave a call to arms that triggered the Mexican War of Independence. The city of Dolores is the most commonly known by the residents as the Independence Cry. 
every year on the eve of Independence Day, the president of Mexico reenacts the cry from the balcony of the National Palace in Mexico City while ringing the same bell used in 1810. During the patriotic speech, the president calls out the names of the fallen heroes who died during the War of Independence, and he ends the speech by shouting, Viva Mexico, three times, followed by the Mexican National Anthem. In the 1810s, what would become Mexico was still New Spain, part of the Spanish crown. The independence movement began to take shape when Jose Bardo Garcia de Lada, pretty sure I butchered his name, but just Google the uh, cry of Dolores people to get the, get the right names and pronunciations. I'm trying here. Anyway, he went to the small town of Dolores and asked the local uh, Roman Catholic priest to help initiate an effort to free New Spain from Spanish control. Um, he went to Washington, D.C. for military support, uh, being the first Mexican to do so. The priest remained in Dolores, waiting for his return with military support. However, fearing arrest, the priest told his brother to make the sheriff free the pro-independent inmates there. Uh, the brother of the priest and armed men set 80 inmates free in the early morning hours of September 16, 1810, around 2.30 a.m. The priest ordered the church bells to be rung and gathered his congregation. Flanked by a captain in the Spanish army, he addressed the people in front of his church, urged them to revolt. His speech became known as Cry of Dolores. The liberated country adopted Mexico as its official name. Mexico's independence from Spain took a decade of war. Jose commanded and led Mexico to victory. Independence was achieved by the Declaration of Independence of the Mexican Empire 11 years and 12 days later on September the 28th. 1821 however the priest is credited as being the father of his country as i said a little while ago uh every year the president of mexico does this uh celebration and on every september the 15th around 11 p.m the president of mexico stands on the balcony of the national plaza in mexico city and ring the same bell that was wrong in 1810, which was moved to the National Palace. The president then recites and shouts of patriotism based upon the cry of Dolores with the names of the important heroes of the Mexican War of Independence who were there on that historic date. Uh, the, day, uh, the cry ends in threefold shouts of Viva Mexico. Beneath the balcony of the National Palace, there's a large crowd in the plaza to hear the reciting of that speech. The event draws up to a half a million spectators from all over Mexico and tourists from around the world. After the president recites each line beginning with Viva, the crowd responds by repeating Viva. After reciting the speech, the president rings the bell one last time and waves the American, uh, not the American, I'm sorry, the Mexican flag to the applause of the crowd. This is followed by the playing of the Mexican national anthem by a military band from the Mexican armed forces with the crowd singing along. The ceremonies conclude with a spectacular fireworks display on the grounds. In the morning of September 16th, or Independence Day, the National Military Parade in honor of the holiday starts at the plaza and its outskirts, passes through Hendigo Memorial, and ends in Paso de la Reforma. I hope I said that right. I think I feel good about that one, people. <laughs> Mexico City's 
Main Boulevard. Every year for National Hispanic Heritage Month, there's a theme. And 2023 is no exception. The, uh, the theme this year is Uniting Communities. This theme recognized the need for solidarity and cooperation around diverse groups, especially at a time of societal division. The events and celebrations of 2023 are geared towards fostering unity while still appreciate, appreciating the different cultures that fall under the Hispanic and Latino umbrella. Multiple events are being planned for this year's uh, National Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, uh, a festival of favors. One of the most appreciated aspects of the Hispanic Heritage Month 2023 is the coronary celebration. The theme uniting communities particularly resonates in the realm of food, which we all love. <laughs> I don't care what your background is, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, this resonates in food where various cultures converge to form a delicious blend of flavors from Mexico quesadillas to Argentinian uh, alzados, al alzados, pretty sure I said that wrong, never had it, <laughs> but it sounds interesting, and the Puerto Rican mofongos. Pretty, I, I think I said that right because I've heard it said before. Food festivals this year are more elaborate than ever, it, um, including veg, uh, vegetarian, vegan options to make it uh, inclusive for all. Cooking workshops led by celebrity chefs and local culinary experts are also a part of the month's itinerary teaching people the techniques and secrets behind Hispanic and Latino cuisines. Uh, another form of celebration is art. Art serves as a universal language, transcending uh, geological borders. Uh, Hispanic Heritage Month of 2023 is marked by a host of art exhibits and installations across the United States. These exhibits showcase the diversity within the Hispanic and Latino artistic communities, uh, featuring works from different countries and art forms, including Mexican murals, uh, Cuban, Cuban art, and Colombian sculptures. Public art projects, too, have found a space this year, inviting people to contribute and co-create installations that reflect community voices. Of course, we can't have festivals without music no hispanic heritage month would be complete without the rhythm of music and dance the lineup for 2023's include a wide range of music genres that in exceed much more than traditional mariachi or sasha uh genres like reggaeton for instance are being celebrated with full vigor live concerts are being supplemented by virtual performances ensuring that people can join in the celebration from any corner of the globe dance workshops teaching samba tango it, the list goes on and on providing hands-on experience for those willing to take their appreciation to the next level and of course the silver screen theaters and film screenings are also an integral part of the 2023 celebration films from renowned hispanic and latinos direct uh, latino directors like galermo del toro and alfonso coyon are being showcased in film festivals across the country the theatrical performances are just as varied with plays and shows that dive into the nuances of hispanic history folklore and contemporary issues Hispanic Heritage Month 2023 is setting a new standard for cultural exploration and appreciation through the diverse and inclusive range of activities and events. The month is not merely a period of passive observation. Instead, it invites active participation, allowing everybody to experience the rich cultural 
heritage that Hispanic and Latino communities bring to the American forefront. As we continue to explore what uniting communities mean in this context, the takeaway is clear. The depth of Hispanic and Latino culture offers a unique and enriching experience that resonates far beyond just one month on the calendar. And I cannot agree with it more. Uh, I, I stated a little while ago that my best friend, he is Honduran. Uh, my other best friend, <laughs> who was his cousin, by the way, uh, they are Hispanic and they, uh, I love their culture. You know, uh, we are so close. It's not even friendship at this point. <laughs> it's not even, we are truly family. Um, he's the guy father of my kids. I'm the guy father of his child. Uh, we, we spend holidays together. I go to their house and you know, all the, the food and stuff like that. I get it because I've been to the houses at eight, you know, of, of different types of food stuff. That's my first time. And only, um, <laughs> I ate a cow tongue. I ate cow tongue at his house. And I'm like, I didn't know what it was <laughs> until after I ate it. Uh, but you know, I experienced so much, you know, the music, the, the dancing, you know, uh, it's just, it, it's a beautiful culture. And as much as I love my culture, I love, uh, African culture. I love black culture. I love my people, but I can't help but have respect and love for their culture as well. And I wouldn't know that if I wasn't willing to dive into it. And that's why this year with the theme of uniting communities, I think this is a good opportunity for everybody to experience this culture, you know, to, to uh, learn more of the uh, Hispanic and Latino history and, and really, you know, dive into it. I'm, I'm just speaking to my black uh, brothers and sisters right now. You want people to take you seriously. You want people to respect your culture, you know, look in more of your uh, background. We need to be willing to do the same for other cultures as well, you know, and I, at least that's the approach I take. You know, I can't sit here and be a hypocrite and preach like, Oh, black people, we, we got it bad. You know, you know, you don't respect our culture and this, that, and the third. And when it comes to uh, the Hispanic culture, uh, uh, background and culture, if somebody come to you with it, you're like, I don't care. Yeah, nah, you can't have it that way. You can't have it both ways. You know, we got to respect each other's cultures. And it's the crazy part about it, we are so much alike. We are so much alike. It's sickening, really. <laughs> I tell I tell him that I tell my friend is we're just the same. We're we're alike. We're alike. You know, <laughs> there's nothing different. You know, other than the fact that I guess the color of our skins, and he has the unique ability to uh, speak two different languages. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you want to count ebonics as one, I guess I I speak two languages as well. But in any event, yes, uh, I employ everybody to uh, learn a little bit more this month. This uh, Hispanic heritage month and get some, you know, get some history involved. That's why I wanted to tell the story of the cry of Dolores, you know, it's that, that we can learn a little something, something, cause I'm pretty sure that's not taught in schools. You know, they don't want to teach their own history here in school. <laughs> so why would they want to teach somebody else's? But in any event, like I said, that's another show for another day. Uh, I think this is a good time to dive into a film that I absolutely love. And I think it's a perfect film in honor of this month. And look, I really wasn't looking to go see this movie. And if memory serves, I don't think I did. I think it came on Netflix or something like that. I, I can't remember. Cause this was before Disney plus. And so I think it was on Netflix and my daughter, wanted to watch it and me and my daughter watched it and I cried. <laughs> I cried at the end of this movie. I'll be, I was tore up and it was so, 
beautifully made. The animation was amazing. It is the 2017 computer animated fantasy film from Pixar and Disney Coco. And it stars Anthony Gomez, Gail Garcia Barnett, uh, Benjamin Brett, and Edward James Almost. And the story follows a 12 year old boy named Miguel who accidentally transports to the land of the dead, where he seeks the help of his deceased mus musician great great grandfather to return him to his family amongst the living and reverse his family's ban on music. It is directed by Lee Ongrich, and this is an amazing film. It is a true family film, and it is a film that really does respect the Mexican culture. And beautifully made. I, I can't remember watching a Pixar film and being disappointed. Uh, you know, some aren't as good as the others, of course, but never walked away disappointed. Coco is one of the best Pixar films they've ever released. It is so touching and so well acted. The voice acting here was amazing. The music was amazing by Michael Giancino. I, I cannot express to you, if you have never seen this movie, I cannot recommend a film more than, than this movie. It doesn't matter what culture you are. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, uh, Asian. Uh, it doesn't matter. This is a beautiful film. Let's start off with the animation. Yes, it's computer animation, but it is some of the best computer animation you're ever going to see. All the colors, all of the characters having their distinct features Oh, uh, it was, it was like, I don't know. I, it, it felt like you were transported into the land of the dead and it was, and it's not land of the dead. Like it's full of zombies and well, technically they are, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> not bloodthirsty army of the dead type things. It, it was, it was just somewhere ironically, like you, you will want to go there. <laughs> it was just so beautiful. The way it was depicted in this film, uh, the young actor, uh, Anthony Gomez, who portrays Miguel, awesome job, awesome job uh, in this role, um, really brought sympathy to this role. And, and one of the things I want to touch in on when I'm talking about the cast, all Latino cast, all of Hispanic heritage and you would think that's a no brainer in a film like this, but if you go through history, it's not really that common. It's not really that common that you would get an all Latino cast voicing these characters. It, it's sad, but this film does it in this film. It, you can feel it here. The family aspect here, um, is a Disney film, of course. So it's going to be family. It's going to be cute and cuddly. But it's really different in that aspect. It's not a cute and cuddly family thing. It's a real family. You know, <laughs> it's a real family. And this, you know, they have their problems, they have their issues, and they have their uh, differences. And it was on full display. And like I said before, it doesn't matter what culture it is, it spans through all cu cultures. There are elements of this family I can see in my family. There are elements in this family that I've seen in friends of mine's families. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it, it really unites everybody. And once again, the writing and the directing here did a marvelous job of connecting all communities, not, not excluding everybody from here. This isn't just a Latino movie. No, no, no. This is for everybody to watch. You know, you can get something from this film, uh, no matter your background. And I, I really appreciated it for that. But at the same time, celebrating the Mexican culture to a level that we haven't seen on screen. Honestly, I don't live action animation, whatever, uh, uh you know, prior to this, you've never seen 
the culture displayed like this, not in an American made film, you, you know, uh, at least to, to my knowledge, I haven't seen it. I'll put it that way. I'm maybe there are films out there that I just haven't seen, but this is the one that I really just sat down and I felt the love and care that went into it to celebrate this culture. Uh, the twist, the villain all worked. It wasn't shoehorned in. It wasn't, uh, you know, clunkily discovered. This was real in that ended. My God, people. <laughs> but then, oh, I'm getting goo. I don't even know if I can get through it. Oh, so beautiful. It will bring you a cry of of sorrow and jubilation all at the same time it is a freak show of emotions <laughs> that you would go through uh while watching this film but at the end of it all when the credits start to roll it will be tears tears of joy i love coco and it is a perfect film to watch in honor of hispanic heritage month pixar's coco which was released in 2017 which is probably on disney plus right now if you want to check it out gets a letter grade of an a i i love this movie i i really do i will watch it i will probably watch it once a month if i knew i could get through it without crying like a 10 year old girl <laughs> but it is it is a good good film and, and, and another reason, you know, I would, I cried through it is because of the afterlife, letting go element of it. And, you know, around that time, I was still dealing with the death of my father kind of heavily. It still is in a way, but I, I, I'm, I'm getting stronger. But I wasn't in 2017. <laughs> I wasn't in 2017. And so it really, it really kicked me in the gut. And so I was. I really felt it, but uh, maybe I can watch it now and I won't shed a tear. I'll try it. I'll definitely watch it within the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, Coco, check it out. But, but yeah, man, uh, it is National Hispanic Heritage Month, everyone. Um, look, I don't know what you can do. I don't know what festivals. I know in the city where I'm at, they have a Hispanic festival uh, this weekend, uh, September the 16th, uh, I think either, I think all four weekends, but I know for certain, uh, the first weekend and uh, you know, they, they, you know, go check it out. They, they, I'm pretty sure they have festivals all over the place. So uh, go check out, if, check the food out, man. The food is amazing. Mexican food gets off, man. And I wasn't a big Mexican food person until, I want to say a year ago. Yeah, I'm that much of a baby. I, I you know, because I'm real, I'm real picky in what I eat, and so I wasn't really, uh, <laughs> I wasn't really uh, gun ho on trying Mexican food, and so I tried it about a year ago, and I was like, man, I've been missing out. Man, Mexican food <laughs> gets off, and so I look, try their foods. You know, go to their festivals. Go to the. Uh, a uh, uh, little events they have set up, you know, unite as a community. Uh, I do remember, I'm going to tell this story and we're going to roll up out of here. We, uh, they used to have a Spanish fest. We call it the Spanish fest uh, where I was. And it was behind the hospital, you know, where I grew up. And I always wondered why did they put this <laughs> behind a hospital? I mean, literally it was in the hospital parking lot behind it. And I always thought, like, man, aren't you supposed to be quiet around the hospital? I mean, you have uh, uh, Mexican music blasting and, you know, uh, I say Mexican. It could be uh, Honduran or, I don't know, <laughs> Puerto Rican. It, it, it was just all type of uh, Hispanic music going on. Loud. <laughs> it's very loud. You have uh, roller coasters. Uh, not roller coasters. What do you call those things? Ferris wheels and uh, games and all. It was just a big fest, and it was a 
it was an event, man. They end up they end up moving it. Uh, I don't know, maybe about twenty five years ago. Yeah, I, I, I'm really reaching back. But anyway, that was the event. We used to always be ready for the Spanish fest, you know, because me and my boys, not my friend, not my Hispanic friends, uh, they would be there too because everybody went to it. It was the thing, you know, <laughs> you go to the Spanish fest. But me and my boys, we would go there to pick up on girls. <laughs> that was the spot to pick up on girls because you're getting – Girls from all over. You're not just getting the ones you're going to school with. <laughs> you're getting the girls from, from New Orleans. You're getting the girls from Metairie. You're getting the girls from the West Bank. Yeah, all of them are coming to this thing. I mean, it was packed. Everybody was converging <laughs> behind this hospital before the Spanish Fest. And, oh, man, so many, so many memories. Uh, there was always a shooting every year. <laughs> if, if, if you can could, you could set your watch to it. It would be the first Saturday night there was going to be a shooting. Uh, nobody gets shot. It will just be somebody shooting fire in the air or, or there's a fight. It was something that took place that had the police come and break up the whole uh, fest. And it was like, man, come on, man. I was this close from getting old girl number. <laughs> you know? But it was, it was, uh, it was good times. But I've, I'm bringing that up because I didn't go there for the culture. I went there in efforts to pick up some honey. <laughs> saying, hey, man, now I'm of the age and of the marital status to whereas I would go for uh, the culture, for the food, for the fun, for the music and everything else. And. You know, I can't wait to get involved in something. I want to go to one of these. I might go this weekend, to be honest with you. Now that I'm thinking about it, I might go this weekend. I don't have anything planned. And so, yeah, yeah, I might check it out. If it's not too hot, I'll, I'll put that stipulation in. If, it, if it's too hot, I'm staying home. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll, I'll consider it. But in any event, I'm employing everybody. You know, get involved. Uh, have some fun. You know, the year is almost up. We're getting close to the holiday season. Let's let's unwind. It's been a long, hot summer. Let's go to one of these fests, sit down, enjoy the music, enjoy the food, and, and, and more importantly, enjoy each other. Also, check out Coco. Check out Coco. Beautiful movie. Beautiful, beautiful movie. You can contact this show by email kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also look me up on all social media platforms. Just look up the KB Radio Network. Also, YouTube, subscribe to the KB Radio Network channel. Like this video if you don't mind. Don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, and sharing this show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcast listening on everybody thank you for joining me as we commemorate national hispanic heritage month can't wait to speak to you again want you all to know that i love you continue to love one another and until we speak again you all be blessed